The one downside to YouTube is that I'm usually so busy teaching other people how to build games that I don't get a lot of time to build games for myself. And because of that, it's been about five years since I built my last solo game from scratch. Now, like most game devs, I've got a ton of ideas bouncing around, but a few weeks ago, I finally decided to take the leap and build my favorite one. My goal is to finish the project in a month or two, and that might seem like a crazy timeline once you hear what it is, but I'm pretty optimistic given how fast it's been going so far. Let's briefly outline the game design, and then I'll share the trick for how I'm doing it so fast. The idea for this game has been bouncing around in my head since last year. You'll step into the shoes of a human who's been abducted by an alien kid to transplant your brain into a robot for his next TikTok sensation, or whatever the alien version of TikTok is. By the way, if you have a good name for that, please drop a comment below. And of course, with a robotic body, you can't go home, so you get dropped off at a busy space station full of aliens. From there, I'll have you go explore and interact with all the other alien races. I want you to be able to start an interstellar war almost from the start and choose sides. And then I've got about half a dozen jobs that you'll be able to do that are already designed and kind of ready to implement. The only thing I'm still up in the air about right now is letting the players set up a store of their own on the station. I'll probably do it if I don't run out of time or if everybody in the comments just says, yeah, you definitely have to do that. And of course, there'll be a ton of upgrades for the robot that'll tie into the story. There's weapons, scanners, hacking systems, a flashlight, jet feet, and a whole bunch more stuff that I can't even remember. So how could I possibly do this all in one or two months? Well, I'm going to cheat and cut out the first half of the process. Now, normally when we build games, the first half of game development is really spent on the engine. It's not, not the Unity or Unreal side, but all of the stuff that you're building on top of it, the key systems that your game needs. Things like your character controllers for movement, NPC systems for dialogues and quests, or even inventory, merchants, and currency. All of these things need to be built before your designers can really get in and start putting things together. Now I've coded all these systems before in the past and I could probably spend the next two or three months creating them from scratch again, but I don't want to waste my time and for my specific game, there are a few tools that already make it really easy to build. First, to deal with most of the fundamentals I've listed off, I'm starting with RPG Builder. It gave me a character controller, scene management, inventory, quests, abilities, and dialogue all from the start. It comes with a nice editor similar to what I'd give myself or designers if I were building it from scratch, and it instantly cut months off of my dev time. Now, it doesn't handle everything I want in the game, but it does a lot. And since this is an RPG and it's mostly story-based, dialogue is a big part. And because of that, I've also pulled in the dialogue system for Unity package. It integrates right in with RPG Builder, gives more advanced dialogue controls, and has a plugin to let me generate my conversation placeholders with ChatGPT. Of course, if I'm going to have a lot of dialogue, that also means a lot of characters, and characters are expensive. First, let's take a look at the main character. In this game, it's a robot built to hold your brain. It's based on a 2D version used in my game programmer course, and it's even on a bunch of my hoodies. Personally, I think the main character of your game should typically be unique. It's what the player will see the entire time, and it can kind of help set up the tone for the game. So this character was created by an artist on Fiverr. I'll link him in the description. And it cost a little bit over $1,000 with all of the updates. Since I want to have a bunch of NPCs and don't have a ridiculous budget or time, that really isn't an option for the rest of the game. But as an asset store addict, I already have quite a few great sci-fi character packs that cover just about everything I need. Now, I've been a big fan of Proto Factor and Polygon Maker characters for a really long time, and I'm always looking for something to put them into, and this project was the perfect fit. Now, before I talk about those, I need to mention that I told Unity about this game and they were really excited. So they offered to sponsor this video and put many of the asset packs that I'm using into the summer sale, which will be starting July 26th. The assets I'm using will be 50% off for the first week of the sale. And every week after that, there will be another set of assets picked by content creators you probably recognize. And at the end of the sale, they're gonna bring back the most popular assets and put them back on sale for another two weeks. So check out the sale with the link in the description, go get some of the best deals, and especially if you see any really cool assets that you like in this video, make sure you grab them while they're on sale. Now, between the two Polygon Maker and Proto Factor packs, there are more than enough awesome aliens, but I'm also repurposing some of the monsters to be kind of super friendly aliens, because I think it'll be hilarious. They're also full of robots, mechs, and droids I'm using throughout the station, though I'm not sure how I really want the player to relate with them since he is in a 
a robot body with a human brain. I don't know how is it going to be friendly with the robots. Who knows? I didn't mention all of this yet, but I also kind of want the game to be kind of funny. So I planned on adding a bunch of dad jokes. I kind of want to add some funny, cute characters like this alien family that I've got waiting all around in the hangar. I'm still deciding if they should kind of get sucked out into space or maybe squished or something else. If you got a funny idea, please let me know. And that's something else I haven't really talked about is them getting sucked out into space or the environment. So let's talk about environment. About a year ago, I had another artist on Fiverr make me a space station environment. This one was a lot more expensive than the character, but it does allow me to instantly build out levels that snap together with hangers, hallways, and rooms. It was a bit pricey and big, but it still doesn't come close to handling everything that I needed, though. So I also grabbed this hanger full of electronics and props from the asset store. I might use the hanger, but I'm definitely going to use the props. I'm still kind of unsure on whether or not I'll have a second type of hanger there and put that in. We'll see, though. I've also got a few spaceships that I put inside of the hangar so I can kind of fill it out and have my characters coming in, landing, getting getting out of their spaceships and having the player do inspections on spaceships and other types of space related actions. And because you can walk around the space station and see outside, I'm also working on an environment in space, kind of outside that you see through the windows. I already own a lot of CG pit bull assets like the mining station. So I've started placing them in areas where they'll get some great visibility and hopefully make the area look alive. Since I also want it to not look too militarized though, I've also added some cargo freighters from the MSGDI pack. And I think I might grab their jump gate model too. It looks pretty cool. And that covers the core of the art other than particles, which are mostly covered by the sci-fi arsenal pack. But I've also pulled in a few other tools I use from time to time to speed things up. Now on the tooling side, I've stuck with some of my defaults. Odin Inspector is of course one of those default packs that I almost always pull in. And now I'm using the validator all the time too because it finds and fixes problems automatically before they become a real issue. I really love that. On top of that, I'm also using Dootween Pro. I plan on using this for a lot of the cinematics. Right now I've just barely started pulling it in, but I've got a lot of things that I want to move around. I wanna have tight control over them and Dootween Pro will help a lot with that. And the last set of assets that I'm using are for polish. There are a couple of things that I'll get to later on that I think are really important. The first one is kind of obvious if you've been doing a lot of Unity development for a long time, especially 3D stuff, and that's Final IK. It lets you control body movements, which I think is really important in an RPG. I can easily make my character grab a door or pick up an item and have good clean cinematics without needing to hire an animator. And I also really love the text animator asset. Speaking of animators, they're on version 2.0 now and since this game is so dialogue heavy this seemed like a good spot for it you just add the asset in there and then put in the tags and your text is animating i'm not sure which ones i'll use yet but i'll probably overuse and abuse the crap out of them so keep an eye out for that the last two assets i've pulled in i'm not 100 percent sure i'll need yet First is Easy Save. It's an awesome system for saving and loading games, but so far RPG Builder has been handling that and I'm not sure I want to switch away from that yet, but I have it ready just in case I need it. And the other is In World. They've got their AI system for chatting with NPCs and I'm experimenting with it, but I'm not 100% sure that's the route I want to go for this specific game. I'm really curious what you think though. Do you prefer picking dialogue options from a list or chatting more EverQuest 1 style? I guess if you prefer the dialogue list type mode, just uh, hit the thumbs up button or thumbs down. Pick one. And if you prefer the conversations, drop a comment and let me know. And also don't forget to check out that summer sale. There's more than just the stuff I've listed here. Some great deals. So go grab them now. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe so you can come back and see the final result of the game when it's done. Bye.